A good marriage must be created. It is having the capacity to forgive and to forget, giving each other an atmosphere in which each can grow, finding room for the things of the spirit, a common search for the good and the beautiful. It is establishing a relationship in which the independence is equal, dependence is mutual, and the obligation reciprocal. It is not only marrying the right partner, but being the right partner, discovering what marriage can be at its best. What's up everyone, Vu of Envu Films, and I am back with another idiotic video for you to watch. In today's video, I'm going to talk about how you can edit videos faster. More importantly, how you can edit wedding sneak peeks faster, especially if you do next day edits or immediate edits for your wedding clients, such as how I do it. As discussed in previous videos, I like to do next day 24 hour wedding sneak peek films for all of my couples which is pretty much a one minute teaser of their wedding day with regards to how i edit them the style i do them whether it be storytelling whatever it's really dependent on the couple how they are during the day how their venue is how their wedding is that's how i determine how i stylistically edit their film one style does not always match for every single client. So I try to be very fluid, adaptive. I don't have a set style of how I uh, edit my couple's wedding films. I don't have a template. I just do what I feel is best. I do it based on feel and based on experience. With that said, editing flow, editing feel, editing style is not something I feel like I can properly teach or show on a YouTube video or just I don't think I could teach or show period on how that is done properly. That is something that each individual filmmaker, creator, videographer needs to figure out on his own by editing and editing a lot of stuff, editing a lot of videos. I can sit here and show you all like these rules. I don't know, video editing theory, whatever it is that is in existence uh, for teaching purposes but you will never become a great editor overnight or have like a certain style overnight. This is something that is takes time to do. You can't just go to school, uh, learn some stuff out of a textbook, and then just go and start editing banger videos. This is something that you have to practice and you have to spend time on your own time actually doing the work, meaning going out filming something and editing it, filming something and editing it. You cannot just, oh, how did you edit like that? And then just, you can't just ask someone how to edit like a certain way and just you do it your, your, you know, yourself. Study other people's films, study movies, and always practice, practice, practice. Even me, you know, I consider myself a pretty average editor. So I this is uh, still a, a very much a learning experience for me. Every day, every film I produce, whether it be wedding, corporate, commercial, whatever it is I'm working on, personal projects, I am always trying to learn how to become a better editor and that is only by actually doing it. There's nothing I can tell you or show you, in my opinion, to make you a better editor like immediately today. You have to go out and practice and do it and gain experience. That's just the nature of the craft that we, this videography craft, this videography art that we do, you have to keep creating content to get better. There are some things that I feel like can help you edit faster, and this is what I'm gonna to discuss today. Firstly, you have to have a fast computer. You can't be editing on a trash made in Vietnam computer, uh, some old Apple uh, MacBook, whatever it is you're editing on, and expect to be able to edit fast. Any type of slowdown, any type of loading, any type of just lag on your computer is an editing flow killer. Uh, not only does it take more time, but every single time you have to wait for it to load, 
you end up losing of your rhythm. You might go in and check your phone and watch the, the next YouTube douchebag video instead of editing, and it just completely slows down your flow. So if you have a computer and it loads as slow as a Panasonic camera trying to autofocus, you probably need to upgrade to something faster. Um, in my opinion, any, any PC, maybe an M1, I'm not too familiar with MacBook stuff, but any PC uh, with i7, i9, 64 gigabytes of RAM, Hello? I'm not familiar with M1, but any PC with i7, i9, 64 gigabytes of RAM, some type of NVIDIA graphics card, uh, RTX 2060, 27, 2080, or 30, whatever, uh, should be something you should look, look at. If your camera could shoot proxies, maybe you wanna consider doing proxies. I don't, I just drag and drop, my computer's fast. I just drag and drop files directly on the timeline, and uh, that's how I do it. But on top of the, your fast computer, you should consider having fast hard drives. So this is, most people surprisingly still shoot, still be using these old school hard drives here. These uh, HDD hard drives, old school. They're big, they're bulky, but they're slow. They could store a lot, four or five terabytes for only a hundred bucks. And you could store a lot of your backup uh, footage there no problem i that's what i use them for i use it for backup however i edit on these ssds these are smaller faster um and but they don't hold as much this this particular one is a sandisk two terabyte ssd i think they run for anywhere between like 250 to 350 bucks depending on when you get them on sale uh, but this is what you want to be saving your footage on that you're going to be editing. This is where your working projects should go into this drive. So, so as soon as I get home from a shoot, I go ahead and I back up all of that footage into the SSD so I could edit. This is how I could guarantee that there will be no lag. I could edit as fast as possible and so I could get the job done quickly. So all because these are bigger, does mean they're better, they just store more. But like in real life, the smaller quality, not quantity, is much better for transferring things, such as files. So as in your real life situation below your belt, storage is the same way. The smaller, the better, faster, can transfer things in and out a lot quicker. With that being said, on to the next piece, which are these S, whatever you're using for your storage in your camera. In my case, I use Sony a7S III, so I wanna make sure that I could film 4K 60, 4K 120, no problem, in XAVC, XAVCS, HS, uh, X, XAVCSI, pretty much all the codecs I can all the codecs, all the frame rates, I can film on the Sony A7S III with these cards. The only thing I can't do is I think like uh, 120 frames per second in S and Q mode, which is like AXAVCSI 4K60. I cannot do in this cards. You will need the new, I think CFC Fast Type B or A, whatever it's called, to be able to use that. But this pretty much could use all the necessary Sony Codex for the most part with these cards. These are pro grade uh, V90 and V60 SDXC cards. And this is what I use. So this is also important in how fast you can transfer your footage from your camera to the SSD so you could edit on. Those are very important factors because the last thing you wanna do is you wanna get home from a wedding, put in all your stuff to start transferring your footage and you have to wait an hour. I usually have four of these cards that I have to transfer into the SSD. My main camera, my second shooter's camera, and the two other cameras for the different angles during the ceremony. So I have four cards total that has to transfer and I do it all at the same time, all at once. So the next thing you would need to be able to make sure you get all these files in as quickly as possible are dongles. So here I have two dongles. This is just a one, uh, this is just a one 
um, SDXC to USB-C dongle from SanDisk. And then I have another one, the StarTech SDXC to USB-C with two uh, SD slots. So that enables me to transfer one card that there's already a slot on my Dell XPS computer. And then I have these two, which gives me a total of four SD slots so that I can transfer all four cards at the same time. So I don't have to sit there and wait for one to finish, do the next one, wait for the one, do the next one. I could do all four at the same time. So typically for a 256 gigabyte card, pretty much full with footage, so 250 gigabytes worth of footage, it'll take 10 minutes to transfer. So I should be done transferring all of my footage to my computer within 10 to 15 minutes time maximum. And of course I have all the audio footage and drones, so that might take additional time. So typically, let's just say I give myself 15 to 30 minutes to get all the footage backed up to a solid state drive, SSD hard drive for me to edit. And after that, I spend another 20 to 30 minutes maximum to look for a uh, song, which I only need like a minute of. So I find like the best part of the song of how I want to edit this video. Usually it should be a building type song for me. I like to the songs to build up to a crescendo. I spend 20 to 30 minutes to try to find a track that is suitable for the edit. And if not, if I get desperate, I actually just use maybe an old track that I'm familiar with that I've used before for another wedding and I use a certain piece of it so it's kind of different. Or instead of using the vocal version of a song, I use the instrumental version. And sometimes some artists even have alternate versions of the song, I use that. For music, I use Musicbed or Artlist.io most of the time for my edits. Um, so if you're able to get all like the storage stuff out the way immediately that, that night, when you get home, you should be able to start editing. So just backing up your footage quickly and having a fast drive to edit with, that is pretty much half of your problem, right? So as long as you get all that done within 30 minutes, maybe even an hour, and then you can start editing, you should be able to edit a film within an hour and a half, two hours, which is usually how much I take. That's how much time I need to edit wedding sneak peek video. So about two, you know, two hours should be, should be good. Maybe an additional hour sometimes when I gotta like, you know, review things here and there. But the beauty of it is you could pretty much just finish the edit, send it off to client. They got their video within 24 hours. And then, you know, you could watch it back and forth. If there's any fixes you need to do, you can just do it after the fact. But as long as they get their, um, not at least 90%, 95% completed, uh, film, you know, maybe, you know, with minor color adjustments if need be, or minor editing adjustments here and there, uh, they should be good. It should be good to go to show for them to have their sneak peek on time. As I mentioned in another video, the reason why I like doing these sneak peeks really quick is very important for your marketing, right? You know, last thing you want to do is, you know, all the photographers, guests put their photo video content up and you are the professional videographer and you don't have anything for them until like another month, two, three months. By that time, that the hype behind, not the hype, but like by that time, like the freshness of that wedding is pretty much gone. And you know, when you share it, it doesn't have as big as an impact. But if you have a nice sneak peek for everyone to see the day after, it's really good for your company as there's gonna be a lot of guests at the wedding. Maybe some of them are engaged um, and you know they were ready to be married. The quicker they hear about you, the better. So they could book you, lock you in, and you're good to go for the future. So like I said, I can't really show you like editing for that stuff you have to learn by yourself. But you know, you could keep it simple, you could keep it linear, you could just do like a bunch of clips of prep, ceremony reception, call it a day. That's enough for a sneak peek. Um, but then you know you could get more creative about it. And how I think about the edit is sometimes during the day while I'm filming it, I see things that I'm like, okay, that'll be a good thing for a sneak peek. Or maybe hear some good vows or hear like a good speech. I'll be like, that's a good thing for a sneak peek. I could, you know, I see certain things that I captured during the day. I kind of like have a mental check of like, I use that shot for the sneak peek. Things like that throughout the day um, will help you figure out how quickly to edit and find that shot later on while you're editing. And of course, I live in the DC, Maryland, Virginia area. That is my market. So when I'm driving home from the wedding, it takes sometimes 45 minutes, an hour, even longer to get home. So during the drive home, uh, I usually chit chat with Say Park, my second shooter, or you know, also in the time I'm thinking about how I can edit the video in my head 
as I'm driving home, maybe just listen to some music that's kind of like helps me get into a groove. And I just think about it while on the drive home. So then when I get it to in front of my computer to edit, I am ready to just start throwing in clips and, you know, try to achieve the feel that I'm looking for. And of course, a lot of times I don't get exactly what I've been thinking about or the exact uh, inspiration I had for the video. But I do understand that, um, hey, I do understand the time value of money, what the client paid for this wedding and the amount of effort I need to put in to make the video a certain way. I know that I should get this video done no, no longer than three hours. It should not take me longer than three hours to edit a film. Um, because at the time I'm just doing too much and there's, you know, the return on investment in terms of time is not all there. So pretty much those are like the basics of how to get the editing done quickly. You know, you, a lot of times when I get home for a wedding, um, if I want, let's say it's a Saturday wedding and I have a Sunday wedding as well, I want to edit that Saturday wedding that night or sometimes a Saturday wedding and the next day I want to do something with my family. I don't want to wake up on Sunday and, you know, start, you know, backing the footage and editing on that Sunday. I want to do it the day before. So a lot of times when I get home for a wedding, as long as it's early enough, usually early enough to start a wedding film edit to me is 1 a.m. If I get to the computer at 1 a.m., finish by 3 a.m., go to bed, wake up the next morning at, I don't know, good seven hours of sleep, could be 10, 10.30 a.m., it's kind of late, but you know, it's okay because I was editing the night before. But, you know, as long as I get to the desk at 1 a.m., edit, get things done by 3 a.m., 3.30, I'm good to go, get it done, get it over with, you know, the client could wake up the next morning at 10 a.m., you know, whenever it is, since they're probably, yeah. When the client wakes up the next morning, 10 a.m., whatever it is, they wake up after partying, they have their sneak peek ready to go. Um, yeah, shouldn't take that long. And a lot of times I already have like my my LUTs created, my LUTs ready, so I could just go ahead and put the color grade on real quick. No problems, minor color adjustments here and there, and it is ready to be delivered. So I hope this video helped some of you uh, figure out how to edit faster. Um, you know, it all starts with the equipment you're using to edit. And the next is your skill, your technique, um, your edit flow, your edit rhythm. And like I said, I could give you, I could tell you so many things here. I could even show you how I did it. But unless you're practicing with your own footage, um, unless you're actually doing it, practicing to, to, to edit your own footage a certain way, um, you're never gonna get better. You have to practice. You cannot, I cannot really, I don't think I could tell you anything um, or show you anything that's gonna make you edit, you know, this, that, and the other. Yeah, so with that said, if you enjoy this content, please give this video a like, uh, subscribe to the channel. Until next time, lighten up. A good marriage must be created. It is having the capacity to forgive and to forget, giving each other an atmosphere in which each can grow finding room for the things of the spirit, a common search for the good and the beautiful. It is establishing a relationship in which the independence is equal, dependence is mutual, and the obligation reciprocal. It is not only marrying the right partner, but being the right partner, discovering what marriage can be at its best.